and there is also in the next one you see in those metal pieces there is also banding uh, so banding shaping and several colors of stones is what we encounter uh, as produced in indus and exported to mesopotamia and internally consumed as well within within the indus culture and this is what we get to see this Uh, this 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 is closer to how an excavation result would be uh, you know you get and, and and stuff like that but this is not how you would encounter them typically when you dig uh, and and get into an excavation uh, but you, but this is to show you uh, all the shapes and sizes and colors and dimensions in which in this beads are produced today and this is just a, a, a sample in fact this particular sample uh, i must give you a disclaimer this is not even from indus this is actually from mesopotamia and the mesopotamians not only imported finished goods from indus they also im imported loose beads from indus and they did their own stringing there uh, um, locally combining other materials that they got from syria and 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 egypt or wherever else from anatolia or wherever else so this is there is a lot of mixture here so i want you to be aware of that as well um um having said that now i just want to go back and look at each of the three readings that we have so far uh that is fish as a star fish as a star we and looking at the types of fish that we have there have been readings have been proposed fish plus stroke is a rising star fish plus a slanting stroke inside it is a falling star a fish plus ray is a twinkling star you may ask why do you need a twinkling star all stars twinkle uh, but that's not quite true uh, planets do not twinkle uh, and i do not know if the indus people knew the difference between planets and stars except through this observation that there are these star like objects that do not twinkle and there are other stars that twinkle and therefore there is a category of fish or star which twinkles and that's why you have the rays uh, and then you have um, a star inside four lines and four lines is generally understood to be many or a numeral marker it could be called into question we'll come to that as part of our discussion but for now i provisionally take that reading that it is that it is indeed many and then uh, we see a, a fish with an angle on top that is a roof uh, some people call it roof some people call it an angled hat but it's got a roof on top or an angled on top and it could as a, as as a, as a, as a star it could simply mean those stars that you see at the zenith and those opposed as opposed to some who see which you see only on the horizon for instance mercury and venus never climb up in the sky they either are evening stars or morning stars but they never really climb up in the sky right so you you will always see them at up to about 60 to 80 degree ascension and then they don't climb up any further you lose them you lo lose them to daylight um, or you lose lose them to uh, 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 the, the daylight that's past that past or daylight that's to come uh, they never appear in the middle at the zenith so and then you have uh, a, a star that that that's hatched uh, and it's got a roof on top we could easily read it as a, a dark star and saturn has indeed been understood and spoken of as a, as a dark star and so on um then uh, you we will go to that horned enclosure there uh, it's easily possible for us to read as a, a star inside taurus because it's got the horn of a bull and it's it's okay it's a reasonably uh, uh, um, agreeable uh, way to uh, uh, read it the next one shows a star and a bird within brackets and it is possible to read it as uh, um uh, 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 you know uh, a planet of a special position in a constellation and so on um so a star reading for all possible types of fish that in the represents or at least the most prominent and the most frequent types of fish that in the rep represents is possible and each one can be understood as a star in different ways with all the variations of the graphic language that we encounter in indus and and that's how we see it then we go and we look at 
the fish star as a person, as a, as a persona, uh, as a nymph, as an apsara, as a meena, as meenakshi, as matsya, as Vishnu, and all of them um, are, 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 are likely and all of them are possible for the, for the simple reason. I'm not proposing any word values here. You cannot go and call that Matsya or Vishnu. You cannot go and call that Meenakshi or Meena. I'm saying all those semantic or semiotic values are possible and it have, they've been possible and they've been proposed, they've been read. Um, and a, a fish plus stroke uh, is, is as, 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 uh, has been, has been, and a slant, another type of apsara, and a ray, another type of apsara, and so on and so forth by Airavata Mahadevan in the, in the, in the fish paper in 20, 20, 2014. And all of those readings are possible. And in fact, uh, in that paper, he also showed the only love story that we have ever encountered in Indus, which is the last one, which is bird plus uh, enclosure, where he, where he said uh, that is Pururavas and Urvashi. And Purura was calling Urvashi as Purpuru, Purpuru. Uh, and he went on to talk about the first love story that we got to hear uh, from Indus in, in, the, in that particular sign. So we have seen the star values. We have seen the person values. And now we will go on to see the objectivist uh, 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 bead values. We look at the bead values and we look at the bead plus stroke. And we can say it is the color of dawn or it is the color of the rising star, or we say bead plus slant. And we say, we are looking at the uh, 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 bead and, and in it, the color of the night. Uh, and we look at a, 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 a ray and we say, we are looking at an iridescent uh, uh, bead, which is twinkling, shining uh, uh, in all ways. Uh, and, and we look at the plural marker uh, uh, that the fish is enclosed in, we can easily, uh, 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 say many types of beads as we saw in those necklaces, which had many types of beads in, 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 in one, one necklace. If you see the angle on top of it, we can say, we can always say it's, it's, it's a bead that's been shaped into an angle by, by the Indus craftsman. Uh, if we see a, a, a hatch, uh, uh, we, we, we can always say it's, it's banded fish of the lighter color. And if we see, see a slanted uh, a hatch, we can always say it is a banded bead of the darker shade. And if we see the next cap, uh, uh, which is here, we, we can very clearly see evidence of gold capping on top of uh, 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 the bead. And then if we see it in the horned enclosure, we can say it is a bead inlaid in ivory. Uh, 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 and, uh, uh, and then if we, if, we, if we see it along with the bird, uh, as Botha has already pointed out, that it is a color mo uh, uh, qualifier for the bead because it was common to call a bead by the bird color, especially the pigeon color and so on and so forth. So, so you can, if we go back, so we, we can e read it as a star, we can read it as a person and we can read it as a bead, apparently with no contradiction. As long as we are careful not to put word values into them, then we get into a fight of which language came first, which language came later, what does this mean, what does that mean? As long as we do not get into that, it is actually possible to read our entire heritage into that. In fact, that's the great thing about Indus. Uh, uh, almost everything any Indian says about Indus is actually likely to be right. The real trouble is putting it into the stacks of history and organizing them by time. And that is where we get into a lot of trouble. And that is where we get into maximum uh, uh, argument. And that is where what is meant to unite us begins to divide us. So if we leave that out and we just look at, you know, uh, uh, the ideographic value, uh, uh, the ideographic value can be processed as an idea that they were expressing. And the more and more we look at in the science, the more and more ideas they communicate to us. And we can understand from that how big these people thought. They always had a very big idea. And they backed that idea and they went with it. And that is really the picture that emerges from that. Uh, I would like to go one step a little more further into, into fish. Uh, sometimes you see a fish and then you see a two stroke uh, 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 modifier. Uh, it's easily possible in the context of the object. And if it is found along with the object 
or on the object itself to easily read it as a fish sign where the two numerals represent a string count. We saw a four string necklace. We, we, that get, they could have been an eight string necklace. We could have been, they could have been a seven string necklace. But if we get the object context, okay, then we can easily read. It's a, in, in, in Tamil, we would say, Ratta vada, moon vada, nal vada, vata. Vata is string. Uh, um, uh, uh, so we can easily read the number of strings. So the, the object oriented or objectivist reading of it is fully validated, fully validated. That is a very secure way to understand it. The mythical way where we read the persons, they have to be understood through the subsequent literature because we don't have direct literature that comes to us from Indus. So, and, and it is reasonable to assume that this literature always took something from its past. It was not actually giving its present alone, but it also took something from its past. And therefore we take that and we take all the layers of meaning. And then if we kind of summarize it, what we get is actually the, what fish is not en encoding is not Dravidian mean. It is en encoding a quality of light. It is a photonym. And it is the light that Indus is talking about when it is talking about fish. Why is the light of fish so special? Uh, did Indus people not know of stars? Did they not know the sign for the stars? Did they not know to write it? They knew it, but they chose fish over it. One, there could, there could be many reasons, but I will give you a, a, a couple of reasons, small reasons. Uh, one, a fish leaps out of the water and catches the light of the sky. And at that moment, it catches the light of the sky. That moment represents the union of the heaven and the earth. And that very similitude and all the isomorphism is the reason why fish is an integral, intrinsic, and the, came to be the most important sign of the Indus Valley civilization, to the extent you could even say that fish was their actual trademark in their commerce and their long-term trade, uh, long-distance trade. It was their trademark, it was their brand. It represented more than the object, even, in, even within commerce, within the material culture. And it is a photonym, uh, uh, which is a word that expresses light and all its qualities. So we have the summary here, as a, the fish as a photonym. Uh, at the first level, it is light, dark, shade, color, shine, glitter. At the second level, it is star, planets, stones, beads, metal, shine, glitter. You see the shine and glitter are the common denominator. It, as, a, as a time of day even, it means day, night, dawn, dusk, and so on and so forth. And as persona, it means nymph, apsara, and heaven, earth, and the union of heaven and earth and so on. And in the later Puranic periods, Vishnu becomes the Matsya avatar and he actually brings the lost knowledge from beneath the waters. And then Vishnu becomes, becomes Varaha avatara. He brings out the lost knowledge from under the earth. Um, and all of them allude to the fish sign of Harappa through succeeding generations and long spans of times to accumulate the legend of India as we understand it today, but we don't understand it in a time context. And the time context is the, is the problematic area. And of course, uh, that will continue to be an ongoing discussion. It has to be resol resolved through scholarly uh, engagement. It cannot be resolved in, 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 in uh, magazine articles and, and, and uh, um, uh, sessions such as this, which are in intended for the general uh, audience, uh, uh, the general enthusiasts, though there may be some very erudite people here who know it much, much better than I, I, I do. It's more than likely. And, and, and if there are people like that, I, I, I'm honored to have them here. Um, so that's the fish photonym. Was fish the only photonym that, 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 that Indus people had? Uh, did they have other signs uh, uh, that encoded light? Of course, they had sun, which encoded light. Uh, and sun, uh, um, uh, uh, and then the moon, uh, 
if you see the sun and the moon there is a beauty there uh, there is an isomorphism there is a very similitude there the sun is also the eye that is the open eye and the moon is the closed eye and that is how they so show the sun and the moon uh, the, the 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 two signs adjacent to that uh, uh, to the right um, uh, discount the diamond signs see only the two lines uh, uh, that 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 are next to that uh, uh, one line in the first instance and two lines in the second instance uh, i propose that they are photonyms and they also represent shine or glitter and additional words to shine glitter by the industry especially as they began to sell metal as well and they needed to represent metal besides beads and there was shiny metal and metal of various degrees of shine including dark metal uh, uh, they had gold they had copper they had tin um, so they needed a greater vocabulary uh, a photonymic vocabulary uh, and at that time they began to use these signs in addition as markers of glitter uh, is 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 my hypothesis uh, this should be taken with not just a pinch but a heap of salt uh, uh, but i am merely indicating this for you to understand the drift of thinking uh, uh, um, that 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 can lead to uh, the unlocking of the meaning uh, on an ideographic basis without being over enthusiastic about words and proposing words and based on words assigning origin stories uh, 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 to them and i think uh, 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 and, and and i think i speak for a majority of uh, the scholars when i say this uh, because a majority of the scholars agree uh, uh, that the indescript is ideographic uh, uh, but they are compelled into phonographic discussions uh, because somebody has uh, 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 you know let the genie out of, of of the bottle and thereafter it's not possible to keep quiet because if you keep quiet they will run away with that argument and and make that to be uh, uh, the truth uh, and therefore you have to engage in phonological argu argu arguments you have to engage engage in the language debate uh, uh, but it is not the language debate that should decide the nature of the indescript it is the nature of indus itself that should decide the indescript uh, um, um, so I, i think when i say this i do represent a majority of the scholarly community um so these are the other photonyms and i have done a very brief uh, survey of that a much more comprehensive survey has to be done it has to be then statistically evaluated it has to be then uh, 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 assessed for uh, uh, its truth uh, vis-a-vis its 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 falsity uh, and 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 so on uh, so they had photonyms in other words um they also had metronyms uh, uh, a, a civilization could not do without uh, measuring objects uh, and uh, ways to represent those measuring objects and ways to speak those measuring objects uh, certainly not as advanced a civilization as as as, as indus uh, there must have been many metronyms uh, metronyms are right now the most fashionable area of indus research uh, this is what most scholars are after Uh, there is a reason for that it's not just a fad it's just that you know uh, we are now seeing uh, a, an advancement in indus archaeology uh, and the sharing of that archaeology uh, in an unprecedented manner uh, through online videos and websites by archaeologists who otherwise wrote mighty tomes of 8000 pages and 10000 pages who which we could not access so there has been a constant steady stream of knowledge passed on by the archaeologists uh, um all of whom have many videos uh, especially kenoya uh, uh, who has engaged with it uh, 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 in a very deep way for decades together uh, uh, now they all have several online videos and they keep talking about it and therefore the the it has become easier for us to understand the material and the artifactual culture of indus in the present and the present generation of science uh, likes that objectivism and the present generation of science likes to advance its objectivism and sometimes in the flush of enthusiasm uh, the present generation of science rejects previous hypothesis uh, uh, and sometimes um, uh, in, in, in fact when airavatam wrote 
the fish paper uh, he rejected the hira's hypothesis and he in that paper remarked his disillusionment with the hira's hypothesis and 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 how his disillusionment led to uh, uh, the understanding of the fish as a nymph uh, uh, and apsara only to conclude that paper and return to the fish ideogram in an even more powerful way than he had originally thought he would because he originally he thought he was moving away from it but then in the end he moved even back even closer to it uh, the same is what i am seeing happening uh, uh, in 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 these so they had objects for measure what is the basic minimum measurement that need about advanced metronomes i'm not talking about uh, um, uh, 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 you know spectroscopy here but i'm talking about what is the basic we need length we need weight we need volume we need time without these four we cannot we cannot we cannot have a civilization at all without knowing to express these as qualities as well as quantities we just cannot go anywhere near constructing a city or making fine jewelry or doing long distance trade or doing accountancy or any kind of relationship it's impossible to uh, uh, do um just like how uh, in the case of bead uh, and in the case of the fish sign uh, there was a, an automorphistic angle to it um in the case of the metronomes also uh, i was able to then understand Uh, an automorphistic uh, angle to it but in this in, in this case it does not come direct, directly from the base sign it comes more from a compound sign uh, um where uh, you see a man with a dot below as a measure of length which i proposed it is uh, nobody else has, as far as i know proposed it before uh, the second one weight is dead obvious anybody can see that a man is carrying the weight uh, in the third the man is carrying a volume represented by the jar on his on his head and the jar is 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 uh, calibrated and in the fourth he is a uh, carrier of time now what does this mean this simply means that the first measure of anything is man himself okay we uh, for instance if we look at a palm tree and ask what is the height of this palm tree they'll say it is 7 men tall or 12 men tall or 18 mil tall or if you ask the depth of a well they will say it is three people tall it is four people tall that is nal al aram okay yet al wayram and so on so we express measurements in terms of ourselves first it is self referential um and then only we go around inventing actually objects for Uh, 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 measurement. So we always use ourselves as the measure, and subsequently our hand became a measure. Subsequently, our feet became measures independently on their own. Our fingers became measures. When we call digital, the word digital comes from here. But we started with our whole. Uh, uh, okay, so a man's height, a man's weight. Even today in Guruvayu, if you go, yeah, a man's weight of something is offered to the god. Uh, uh, and, and and that is how they make offerings to the god uh, 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 a man's volume of maybe oil uh, of of till oil or ghee is offered to the god so it is man's worth of volume and man's time time is actually the most important uh, uh, um, uh, uh, marker uh, and and time has to be understood ahead of everything else but time is also the subtlest marker and therefore more difficult to understand um and here time has to be understood and it is essential to understand time it is not only natural to understand but it is essential to understand time for not us but for the indus valley people because they have to communicate time not only to themselves they need to communicate it, communicate it to the mesopotamians who they were trading with and mesopotamians knew to communicate time they had dynasties they knew which dynasty which regnal year of which king and they knew their entire succession and then there are these merchants going to Uh, you know you know mesopotamia to the akkadian empire to sell uh, uh, things and at that time i as a merchant i say i am the seventh generation merchant so i carry that as a generation marker with me okay so if you see numerals before my man with the arrow sign uh, uh, okay i propose that it is a generation marker and the generation marker was 
absolutely important and that is how they express themselves to other people and so when they go to the akkadian empire and sell the beads to the queen the reigning queen they can say hey, you know my forefathers you know brought these precious stones from our land across the seas to your forefathers you know heading back so many generations and so on and so forth so there is a story that has to be told in terms of time and it's part of my mercantile identity if not my royal identity because i i we do not know still even after understanding many things we still do not know whether they had a royal lineage or whether they had a kingdom as it were but we definitely know it's the they have trade with mesopotamia and there they had to find expressions for themselves and it is more than likely that these merchants would have gone and expressed themselves as part of their identity uh, as you know representing seventh generation eighth generation 12th generation if i read and if this reading is correct the maximum i can read is 12 generations and if we take a generation to be 25 years then we can immediately evidence the record of 300 years of trade in any one seal that enumerates 12 i'm not getting into actual examples right uh, 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 right now actual examples have to be studied far more rigorously uh, they have to be far more understood and and uh, uh, and, and uh, investigated uh, before it can be presented as secure evidence i'm merely illustrating the method of thinking and not actual values for anything but you you can say no no it does this does not represent time but you cannot come back and say no they did not measure time you can say this probably represented time differently than you are saying but you can't say it did not represent time at all so that's 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 really where i rest my case so it was important for uh, the indus merchants to communicate time uh, uh, especially as a generation count so they use the generation marker and for the generation marker they use man and arrow uh, as a combination as a ligature as a compound sign and they put numerals ahead of it like we saw with the necklace sign where they put numerals where in the necklace sign it meant strings whereas in the generation sign it would have in, in ahead of the time sign it would have meant generations or whatever else in that particular context so it had it has a contextual object specific meaning and it has a and therefore the meanings of these words also are likely to change depending upon where they appeared and how they appear uh and whatever i have told you is also important from a graphic design point of view uh from a graphic design point of view what kind of graphic design is indus it was engraved or embossed graphic design right so there was no color in it it was not if if it was a color a single color was washed over it therefore objects could not be re directly represented in their individual color therefore it was important for for their vocabulary to have words for colors because they have to communicate the missing element uh, the elements that are present are obvious but the elements that are missing that are that are not there that cannot be expressed with line art okay with with pure line graphic art you cannot express color unless you bring into play something that means color and represent as represented as a shape so only through shapes they could communicate and therefore they needed those shapes that meant color and fish was one okay so this is how they communicated their meanings um i I think I have I have stayed with the uh, 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 with the uh, uh, sign uh, signery of Indus uh, 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 for some time now. Uh, I will get back to it in greater technical detail uh, later in the course of this. Uh, but before going there, I want to uh, illustrate a small story. Uh, um, and to me, this story is the prehistory of Indus. It is not about Indus. It is about how Indus people saw their past. today when we see in this bc 5000 years back okay and people of the indus had awareness of time they had a sense of tradition they had a sense of religion and they had a sense of their past and these signs to me signs that i'm going to show now to you they show me 
the past of indus okay the very first sign is on the on the left and on there you see a woman strangling two beasts that is what you see in the middle uh, a woman strangling two beasts is what you see in the middle on the top you see the sun sign at the bottom you see the elephant um and this represents the past of indus it represents a time before the bronze age it represents a time when it was still ivory age uh when indus was not producing artifacts out of bronze uh at the time indus was producing artifacts out of ivory uh ivory uh, as 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 a material uh craft is reductive craftsmanship meaning you scoop out material from from a block uh, whereas pottery for instance is additive craftsmanship where you add material you take material you add material you add material you add material and you keep scooping up and that is pottery whereas ivory is reductive material and it is very malleable to uh, 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 um, you know pressure and touch Uh, and 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 instruments that you use on them including stone instruments you don't need to have metal to work with you could even work with sharp stones uh, and it is possible to scroll things on that so it represents an ivory civilization ivory age uh, long before the indus became a mature bronze age civilization they were an ivory civilization and then in between they advanced in pottery and then they came to metal and when we speak about the harappan or the indus valley civilization we largely speak about the bronze age civilization but indus people spoke about their own past and in that past they reveal uh, a different facet uh, now the we, what is interesting about the scene uh, the sign apart from that is a woman strangling two tigers a woman strangling two tigers and its oral accounts are not available to us subsequently anywhere okay we have several accounts of men strangling animals uh we have precedents uh, uh in 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 mesopotamia from the tales of gilgamesh uh, uh of men strangling animals but we don't see a woman strangling animals so how do we interpret uh this could it be that could it be that that the whole seal uh, does not actually represent a visual narrative that it actually represents an oral narrative of that period where the woman is appealing or ordering to the men to go and tame the beasts it is a speech it is a act it is a appeal that is actually encoded uh, uh, in, in this uh, now you may think it is it is far fetched uh, but i will show you subsequently that it is not so far fetched uh, uh, with with that said let's move to the second sign where uh, you see the uh, uh, man uh, sparing Uh, 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 the beast, um, and uh, the sa same man probably uh, uh, sitting there uh, in an asana uh, uh, posture uh, uh, with horned headdress. Uh, um, a lot of people like to refer to that as yogic posture. I like to refer to it as an asana and not as yogic, uh, uh, mainly because asana is posture. Yogic has to do with breath. Uh, and, and so many other things for which we will never find the archaeological evidence and therefore uh, i am more comfortable with a term like asana than with uh, uh, um, uh, yogic uh, it is the same man uh, who uh, spares the animal uh, who you see below with the same horn dress and this time all the animals are around him he is both the friend and the foe of animals uh, he could he is who uh, uh, is someone that could later be called pashupati Uh, mm, uh or even the protector of animals uh but you can see that the tiger has not yet made peace with him uh, it is still trying to get him uh, 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 uh it's 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 very clear how the tiger is expressed while the the other animals the bovine is bovine and the rest are docile uh, the tiger is not is, is not quiet it is it's still leapy uh, um in the, in the in the next sign we see the same hunt man um here at, at the top right um inside a vessel inside a cup uh, uh, and that's got people leaf decoration uh, um um uh, uh, all 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 around it it is the same man standing there the same three horns uh, his arms are decked out uh, now, and there is also another horned man 
uh, sitting sitting in front of him kneeling in front of him as if praying to him or as if offering something to him and they seem to be equal in rank up until that point but the moment the other man stands inside the pot they are no longer equal and there the man standing inside the pot becomes the first among equal so when the hunter gatherer imagery moves to hunter gatherer pottery imagery the indus man par excellence becomes a hunter gatherer potter hunter gatherer potter hyphenated and he is celebrated as a combination of all those qualities and other hunter gatherers were not in his part made to meet to him and the women supervise this coat and coat anointment the if if some of you uh, lost my audio uh, momentarily let me repeat uh, uh, it, it's about the sign uh, uh, on the top yes, right yes. that i'm talking about so hello yes it we lost it for a second we lost your yeah, audio so, for so, a second yeah, yeah so i'm starting over from that sign uh, so on that sign you see a man uh, uh, in in a horn dress and you see another man in a horn dress one is standing inside a cup decorated with purple leaves and another man is standing inside uh, a, 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 you could call it a cup or an urn or a vessel or whatever uh, but it's 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 shaped to be a, a, a some a container it holds something and there is another man kneeling in front uh, so you clearly see the emergence of first among equals and there is a ram there which is very prominent which is probably brought there for sacrifice and this entire scene is supervised and overseen by the seven matriarchs of the time uh, just like the first one and you can see normally in 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 uh, uh, when you want to signify superiority inferiority uh, size is one way to play superiority inferiority uh, what is a superior make it very big what is inferior make it very small and here you see the the man woman play is not superior inferior in terms of size they are not it does not show any superiority inferiority in rank in fact it is still the matriarchs who are probably calling the shots and and then and then uh, 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 impressed with 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 the with the with the feet of 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 the man uh, the matriarch invites him to his water chamber uh, and their union uh, which which is shown in the in the seal at the bottom right their union is celebrated every year with the fourth crop with the crop of the fourth season is a kind of a uh, an agrarian hunter gathering pottering ivorying and then metallizing civilization that emerges from first principles and its own evidence without superposing from subsequent past any values into it so this is a narrative that i wanted to show you and for this narrative i have individual so i i did a little bit of so this is a fertile ground for conjecture as i say it so i gave the woman a name i called her karu and then i gave the man a name i called him ka and this is the story of karu and ka and karu once upon a time she was there and she orders the beast to be tamed and brought to her or for peace to be restored um and here this is the clinching evidence the one at the top where the man has gone to tame the beast but he is not sure he is dodging and he is taunting the beast he is not sure he is not plunged into the fight at all and this seal is occurs many times in 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 indus narrative and this occurs on the back the front which is faded here is actually another seal that is identical to this okay where the imagery of the woman and the beast have faded but you can see the imagery of the elephant very very prominently the beasts are also prominent here but the rest of them have faded so on the same seal we have the narrative where the woman is holding the beast by its neck and their neck and trying to strangle it but on the back it is a woman it is a man who is actually encountering the beast not head on 
he, 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 he has not taken it. In fact, it's quite humorous. Uh, it's, 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 it's quite a comic relief in, 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 in all of Indus iconography, where he's sitting there on top of a tree. He's not very sure. He's cagey about it. He doesn't know whether to take the uh, uh, tiger on. Uh, so he stays up there. He dodges it. Uh, the tiger is equally uh, uh, suspicious. It's looking back. It's turning over and over the shoulder. Um, and there is a taunt going on. There is a, there is a, there is there is a matchup uh, 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 going on. Uh, and eventually he gets the bull. And once he gets the bull, then he befriends all the beasts. Um, uh, but it, I, as I already said, the tiger hasn't apparently forgotten it. Uh, Indus iconographers show this man Ka with a horned headdress. Sometimes with people leave uh, crowning the uh, hot headdress. Uh, uh, warriors in uh, uh, in Vietnam in camouflage uh, with their helmets, and on top of the helmets, they have all all kinds of leaves on on, on top to cover themselves with foliage. Uh, so the same way. Uh, Above his headdress, he also has foliage, and that is frequently shown, but not in this particular thing. Um, and and he has three heads, has an awareness awareness of all directions, and and this is generally used as an argument to 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 favor the divine religious aspects of it, which it could well be, uh, but it is also as much an aspect of uh, simply a description of somebody's awareness of the ability to see in 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 in, in all directions, such as would have been. Uh, characteristic of a hunter who should have been aware of all things that are going on around him in the forest. He, he, he would have to be ever alert to every situation. Uh, he's in bangle and armor, and I will come uh, to this bangle and armor separately. Uh, um, uh, uh, he's shown to be virile, uh, people call, call the ethyphallic, uh, uh, and he's calm uh, um, in, in, his, in his asana, uh, and he's surrounded and celebrated. Um, and it is this man uh, who then becomes a potter um, where the matriarchs see him uh, elevated to his new role and that role is celebrated, it's anointed. Uh, uh, um, those are of course words that we are using from our, from our later uh, uh, um, uh, uh, understanding of later uh, cultures. Uh, but if you even cut out all the words and just look at it pictorially as a comic strip, uh, uh, which has no captions beneath, uh, and this indeed has no captions beneath. I am the caption uh, 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 right now, but you can see uh, uh, it means that. Um, impressed and charmed, uh, Karu invites Ka to her water chamber, uh, and they unite as gharial and fish. Uh, and Indus represents their union uh, 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 as gharial and fish. Uh, uh, why gharial and fish? That's another sub story. I do not want to get into all the details. I want to present from the, from, from the beginning that could be glimpsed to uh, the end of, the, of, of their myth and their proto-history uh, that they could glimpse. We, uh, we'll, we'll come to these later. Uh, and Indus people celebrated the union of Karu and Ka every year after the fourth harvest or in the fourth season where you can see the matriarch. This is very clearly a woman uh, and you can see four numeral markers, and you can see the crop sign next to it. There could be other meanings here. Uh, I stand to be corrected if uh, other people come up with more plausible meanings or simply dismiss this one saying, this, this does not have scientific uh, uh, validation. I'm more than uh, uh, willing to ac ac accept it. Uh, and here I come to a very important part of uh, the graphic language of, of Indus. Uh, if you look at this sign, and I'm going to rewind a little bit now, and all the signs, and this one, and this one, not this one, uh, yeah, uh, even this one, and this one, there is one element common to all this. <coughs> and that element is the serration that is happening here. You see this? Are you able to see this? The serration, the streaks above the elephant? Yeah. I, if people can't see something, please message me on Zoom uh, 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 so that I know what can be seen by you and what cannot be seen by you. 
Uh, I I have a direct ob- audience of only about three or four people. I think the rest are uh, on YouTube. Um, so I really don't know what's going on there. So it'd be nice to sometimes get a feedback. Um, uh, so this this serration, okay, is common to the Indus graphic expression. Uh, in fact, you can see that on the woman's face. On all sides, you can see the serration. Right? If we go to the next sign, you can see that on the tree, the tree is serrated. It's it's a it's a it's a marker. It's a it's a graphic marker. Um, um, not so much here in in this particular one uh, uh, below, but if you see here. long arms and bangles are serrated in fact you will see it more pronounced in certain other uh, uh, examples of the of the so called pashupati seal uh, uh, more prominently than here and you will also see that here on all the women on their hands on their headdress um and on the man's hands and on his headdress uh you will see the serration as part of the graphic identity of indus and as part of its iconography i understood why i understood how uh if i were to tell an artist today uh, uh that it should be put uh, i i know i i know what i would ask him uh he is drawing for me an illustrator and i'm moralizing what i want i want a picture of an elephant and he finishes the picture of the outline of an elephant for me and i tell him uh, 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 to put these strokes on top and i know exactly what i will tell for these strokes on top i know i'll say hey put a tooth there pallu podu tooth tooth put a tooth here put a tooth here put a tooth here put a tooth here repeat the tooth the repetition of tooth is a graphic identity of indus now speaking of tooth uh, probably this is an appropriate time for me to uh, request uh, uh, bahata to come uh, on camera uh, um, uh, uh, and for me to do a, 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 a proper introduction uh, and hand over uh, uh, a few minutes to her uh, uh, and then do whatever i can uh, 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 with the time that is left bahata are you there yes uh recently most recently uh, uh, as recently as in august this year bahut uh, published a paper uh, on the tooth word of indus uh, and she showed that how the tooth word or the word for ivory uh, is a word that could be securely obtained from mesopotamian records and this is the first time that we securely obtain a dravidian word from mesopotamian records with archaeological basis even min when it was proposed it was proposed linguistically it was not proposed archaeologically and min has endured 70 years but this is actually the first time that somebody has proposed a word based on secure archaeological evidence okay and bahut has also proposed that it is actually tooth and pal for tooth in dravidian or pil for Dra- in 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 dravidian so the art that we see is the art of the ivory people who put tooth for on every icon that they send out to themselves and in which they represent themselves to themselves and to the others that is whether it is they are themselves the intended audience or it is it is an another culture that is the intended audience the tooth or dant okay or the ivory becomes an important marker for expressing themselves and expressing their identity in all ways uh, in in all possible ways uh, and with that i hand it over to uh, uh, bahota um, for any objections first uh, uh, that she has for anything that has been stated until now uh um 
I don't need any uh, uh, confirmation. Uh, if you say nothing, I will take this confirmation and we can proceed. But definitely, if there are any objections, I think both myself and other people should know. Over to you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good evening to you all. And thanks for this great opportunity. It's a esteemed session. I'm really learning a lot of things from here. Uh, <clears throat> regarding, uh, so I am more objectivist. So um, I'm uh, less equipped also, uh, uh, like to, for the mythological interpretations. Uh, and uh, see, since there is this um, the reticence in the script, like since we cannot yet uh, read it and possibly because it is uh, based on ideographic or logographic uh, science. Uh, the statistical methods we cannot directly, if I like in uh, for phonographic uh, phoneme based um, writing, if we can somehow crack a writing immediately we can uh, read it. But here the, there's a problem there. So I think uh, many of our interpretations are uh, not even falsifiable, uh, including mine. So, uh, for that, uh, I think, uh, so uh, the things that I have uh, learned, many things are very, very nice in some, uh, uh, some ways I have one question, like uh, only one or like, uh, if I may say objection, uh, like not objection really, uh, statistically, if I see this uh, for uh, juncture science, right? Like the science uh, that you had referred so after the, you know, uh, after the fish sign uh, uh, thing, you had referred to this diamond sign and their ac uh, accompanying um, the stroke signs. Yeah. Even before that. So <clears throat> here, these stroke signs, uh, I have a, a different uh, understanding because uh, I, I'm not saying what they are, but if we are seeing structurally the script, we see that they always make a very uh, specific juncture in that in the whole writing. For example, uh, the left side of uh, the sign and the right side of the sign, the sequences will be morphosyntactically different. Like uh, when the when the uh, the left side of the sign, uh, the I, I called it a connective signs. Uh, because I didn't go into a very low level means low level sorry in software low level means actually deep and not uh, in other way low so very deep uh, uh, grammar because uh, that again will be very specific so I said I try to say that these juncture signs uh, are actually actually Mahadevan also said that thing actually juncture sign is his uh, time terminology I call them connective morpheme because uh, uh, there are two parts many a times as uh, is very uh, visible in, in uh, uh, the inscription where one part will be always a specific set of sign will be there most of the time. Like there'll be 92 signs which could actually once or twice occur, once or more occur before, before these signs. But uh, only five to six signs dominated 75% of objects where uh, these uh, small strokes are there. So in from there, structurally, even as Mahadevan has also noted, this juncture making signs there as if connecting two different unit of meaning in a message. Like yes. uh, maybe there can be a purposive clause, like I am doing, we are doing this because of this or for this. So, uh, so the right side sequence uh, or the following sequence is uh, grammatically as if that is the main clause because that is much more ubiquitous and that actually it, uh, stays without uh, a, any help of this science. But normally the left side of it is uh, quite uh, grammatically at, so here it doesn't have to be a grammar or grammar. It is the way a cognitive system expresses itself. Like uh, if I want to give a hierarchy, like a cause, cause re, uh, effect hierarchy in my message, like I am doing this because of this or for this, then uh, I have to have a structure like that. So one part was that objective, another part was the main clause. So yeah. uh, 
like the grammar uh, uh, normally directs, like in a hierarchical relationship, normally our um, connectives and the connected, like the principal clause will be stayed there. The subordinating clause in a grammar will always uh, stick to the subordinating uh, more morpheme or subordinating unit. So here also, whenever the in the scribes had to split between the inscriptions, the subordinating unit that is the stroke sign and the and the principal and the uh, subordinating clause had to always stick together. The other part actually went down whenever there was less space. So that means they even when um, in some seals they had to somehow repeat uh, the uh, the this connective stroke sign and their pre preceding sequence in the reverse of the seal as if that is kind of a mnemonic or something well, so if a seal is kept upside down among other seals we might pick one up as part of a mnemonic like which uh, like a, sh a shorter purpose of the seal so that uh, that is sometimes called colophon in other like library catalogs and all. So at, as if that part was giving a, that kind of a meaning and that part was together at the reverse boss. So in that way only I, uh, so uh, other things again, um, I'm uh, very grateful because uh, see when I am calling this bead, uh, uh, then again, uh, when a particular symbol gets used, then there are so, so many semantic layers that are there. So when we oppose uh, some of the preceding uh, arguments, the problem as uh, he had, uh, uh, um, uh, Serge said, Bhaskar said, uh, so uh, the, when we oppose, we sometimes oppose too much. But then uh, I think uh, as Parpola has shown that uh, mean is also meaning glitter and that is how the star uh, kind of meaning also came up in Dravidian language. So then uh, I had all, uh, actually tried to, uh, I actually I am again very materialistic. So when I in Mesopotamia uh, civilization, and they call these uh, beads, fisheye beads. And there is a very important uh, counter witchcraft uh, thing that Kenoir had also discussed that why eye beads were getting so popular that uh, this whole drishti or nazar lagjana or like this evil eye concept that was uh, so that was a very prevailing concept and people had always tried to uh, have a counter effect of the evil eye so uh, in this value was actually exporting please just stop me because i might not have so much time i should not have so much time actually so please stop me when I exceed my Please go time. on, take as much time as you need, please. Uh, so, uh, so this counter witchcraft thing is like, archaeologically when they see uh, uh, in Mesopotamia and uh, even in Egypt, uh, lapis lazuli and all, these are extremely coveted. So at a point of time, possibly Indus Valley was using it less for themselves uh, and exporting it more through Persian Gulf and all. So uh, this uh, eyes, eye bid kind of um, this eye, that is the somebody seeing you, that is a counter witchcraft effect that we always have in a very place, many places. And even in Turkey, we have a uh, eye, eye bid uh, symbol that is called Nazar beads that are really like uh, even popular today. In Amazon, you can actually buy Nazar beads a lot. So uh -huh. this was very much uh, uh, exported from uh, Indus Valley. And uh, if that is true, then this, when uh, in Mesopotamia, they're calling is fisheye bead. Uh, they're also calling some of the, the other beads like snake eye bead and all, but fisheye bead is the most prevalent name. Like there are minute, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, segregation. And then there is a text called Horra Hubulu in Mesopotamia, where they actually try to uh, educate their um, uh, their scribes how to write different uh, seals and all. So there they show that if a particular uh, uh, bead is looking like a snake eye, 
प्लीज नेम इट स्नेका स्टोन इफ इट इज फिशाई नेम इट एज फिशाई स्टोन सो दिस हरा हुबुलु थिंग इज एक्चुअली गिविंग ऑल दिस नेमिंग नोमेन क्लाचर बेस्ड थिंग्स एंड देन आर्कोलॉजी आर्कोलॉजिस्ट कार्टर she has actually shown that uh, for this fish eye bead whereas the lexical uh, textual evidence comes from mesopotamia first because we have we could get them possibly we have lost our perishable writing on some perishable material we don't have them anymore but uh, uh, only in the script is remaining it is the non perishable uh, seal script possibly but uh, now uh, here Hara Hobolo is giving the name nomenclature type, and Mesopotamians are calling it fish eye bead, and they are getting it from Meluha, and again from Magan that brings it from Indus Valley for sure. Carnel carnelian beads, agate beads, banded agate. Now they are getting it from uh, Lothal for the first time archaeologically. and so that is the reason i said that possibly fishai bead will be the reason, uh, name and uh, uh, so but again it is really great to know see that where if the symbol is used that will be one reason again because glitter shine this has this kind of values also so that means they had a semiotic relationship so that made them use this symbol in various level so again th that is a great thing to again again no because from parpola we have known that but again because parpola was giving this uh, very specific mini uh, word values like what i mean and he was saying that these are names of trade uh, traders uh and that was again a phonological perspective which i uh, ha i would uh, with due respect try to oppose but that is where i i think um, this this helps me uh, only mostly the object uh, i i have a problem with that stroke sign as a photonym because uh, the grammatical uh, or the structural juncture that mahadevan has also shown uh that they may make actually uh, that would not have a possible if that is having a different lexical or ideographic meaning and the reason i'm saying this because uh they, these are smaller so when we are having meaning signs like lexical signs and when you are having functional morphemes like we don't write our commas and full stops as a full length character uh so we make a you know size distinguish size size discrimination so i think that is also reflected here because these are the non full length signs yeah, yes. all other signs have the same yes. thing yes absolutely absolutely but i'm there, really learning a lot also is there, is there is there anything you want to show do you want to screen share um uh i i have i didn't actually i i came here mainly to you know listen and learn but i do have uh, uh, uh then so, if you would like to show something please take over the uh, aishwarya can you give a uh, screen to bartha please yes i mean it's enabled so she can screen share yeah. one sec uh but i'm i'm taking time so uh, sir would i would i keep keep this ready so that uh, when we also listen to you after absolutely absolutely all right absolutely all right okay, okay. so let me go back to uh, uh, my screen share and my presentation and continue okay. the narrative and stop me whenever you are ready and we can get back into this okay thank you sir uh, so. yeah so we stopped here with a happy ending uh the festival ending and and if you see here uh, yeah this is where we uh ended uh, so it is between puja and diwali uh, uh, right now so uh, it it's it's kind of auspicious and 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 and, and kind of appropriate in that context uh, having said that i will now move into a more technical part of this discussion which is really in the typography uh um uh, uh, uh considerable amount of work has gone into indus in the last 100 years uh, um I, I into into making uh, uh, corpus uh, 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 making classifying organizing 
indexing, cataloging, producing concordances, texts, and so on and so forth. Uh, 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 but it has never a, a typographic perspective. Perspective has never really been um, attempted. Uh, a, a, a design motive study has been done uh, uh, by Mayank Mahia and uh, uh, Nisha Yadav, uh, where they have split all of these into components and express them as components. But uh, uh, typo when we do typography, the first thing that we do with typography is this. We mark these two parallel lines that you see here and mark the direction of writing, which in this case is right to left and therefore the arrow is pointing left. But what we have done is we have put a, 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 a parallel bar like in a music, Western music notation sheet or even in an Indian music notation sheet. So you put the baseline character, which is the full size right in the middle and that fix the height and the height will thereafter become invariant for every sign. Inferior signs. Uh, and inferior signs can occur in eight positions all around and given the direction, uh, uh, given that we know uh, the direction of writing to be uh, 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 from right to left, I take the forward right as one and go clockwise on it. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So any of these four, five, eight, in any of these eight positions at any time, I can put in a, a marker or a modifier in as formal typography. Now, if you look at if if you look at the interesting part is there is a sign here, and then there are the modifiers here in an inferior size. And to complete the modifier, you write the sign, you move in the direction of writing to the left, and then you go clockwise one two three four five six seven eight, and you write the next character, and then you go clockwise one two three five, five six seven eight. This I am here showing all the potential occurrence. Uh, and not the actual occurrence. Occur actual occurrence we will see. So uh, here there is a base sign grid. There is an inferior sign register, which is upper, middle, lower. And then there is an inferior sign column, which is a leading column, which appears before the base sign. And uh, there is in, in a, a, a trailing column that appears before the base sign and a leading column that appear, appears after the base sign. Uh, uh, okay, so this, is the potential arrangement of an index sign. Uh, and I'm not talking ligatures here. I am talking about basically, I'm, I'm the scribe, I'm going to write it. Uh, I, I am probably literate in, in, with, with, the, with, the, with the signery of Indus, or I'm simply a craftsman. I'm not even literate. I have to do the line work. Uh, I have to carve it into steatite. Uh, and somebody has given me a, an eye copy uh, 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 sample, maybe uh, uh, painted on cloth or scrawled on palm leaf or simply written on sand right next to me uh, as I work the stone and try to carve the material into it. Then at that time, I need to plan my space, the available space going from right of the seal that is of about one inch width to the left of seal to do anything between five to eight, nine, ten, uh, um, uh, um, signs with the modifying signs in their appropriate positions. And what this shows is the potential occurrence of all those modifiers, right? And this approach is this approach the way uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, 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 sets the in the sign to a, into, a, into a graphic scheme is purely graphemic. It is not morphemic. It is not lexemic. It, it, it does not take, uh, uh, but it is very, very clear about one thing. There cannot be any ambiguity about the direction of writing. If you say the direction of writing is right to left, then the direction of writing is right to left and none other, okay? So we proceed on that basis. If we do anywhere top and down, and we have to be very, very clear that the reading order is up to down. If anywhere we put these modifiers, okay, for not for reading, but for scribing it, the position markers are as shown here, 
ठीक है सो विद दैट आई आई प्रोसीड टू शो नाउ पोटेंशियल अकरेंस वर्सेस एक्चुअल अकरेंस so if you look at the position of an inferior sign by register uh the in the bottom register what is on either side it does not occur at all it just does not occur and therefore it's always blank therefore while there are eight potential positions there are only six actual positions the other two they ignore the scribes ignore or even the people who pass the instructions the people who know uh, uh, the language and who uh, know the script and who pass the instructions they are very clear that those two positions in the grid will be left vacant and nothing will be written in there okay so that is an implicit understanding uh, that you don't see see the ground unless the type of art intends to play uh, uh, both the figure and the ground to us so so that we can perceive them both simultaneously here the ground is not meant to be perceived but the ground is part of the cognitive process of the typographer or the craftsman who cuts these shapes into the stone or into metal or whatever other surface or pot uh, um, uh, into whatever other surface that, that he or she has to cut it into and they have a very clear understanding that they will leave these two spaces open and they will not put anything any value there right that is as far as the register level rules are concerned but if you look at it at the column level rule then it is slightly different so in column level you have one of six positions uh i forgot to rem one sec this has no column relevance i should have removed it i did not remove it sorry here i go okay uh, uh one of six positions is 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 uh, 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 possible um oh sorry i'm i'm still reading i've confused myself sorry about that okay so so out, out of the all these positions what happens is that if we take the short stroke and short stroke is the one that appears in the maximum number of positions and we look at what are the positions where the short stroke also does not occur it never occurs above directly above a letter that position seems to be reserved for something else some always for Uh, a roof sign for instance therefore effectively from 6 we are reduced to five positions this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five there are only five positions in which modifiers really occur if when you look at it and as horizontal registers like in a music sheet uh with upper middle and lower registers right so if we go to column wise look then it can the middle column is not is never considered a column the middle has no column value at all it's only what is on the sides the flanks there is the before or the after that has a columnar uh, uh, value uh, sometimes this column is taken by just one in the middle by one sign in the middle uh, and forward or two signs up and down and forward or one two three signs up middle and down and forward and or one two three four going clockwise from here and at that time alone the these flanks are occupied in the chess grid of the eight squares that are there around the main grid okay uh, so this is how the columns are used and this is how the registers the horizontal rows and the registers are used if we go to column and look at actual occurrences okay for the line 
it would occur something like this when this this occurs but at the time they eliminate this column line and bring them closer together for with design motives uh, with aesthetic intentions uh, similarly in the third one there are three lines can occur and again they can bring them closer together and stack them bring this stack closer together so that it does not have to exceed the height and 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 so on uh, and and so when it has to flow all around it will follow the order and it will not occur in the middle it will follow a clockwise rotation of 1 2 3 4 and this is the graphic schematic of the indescript this graphic schematic is not proposed it is it is not part of any corpus it is not part of any uh, known classification of of indus uh, uh, scenery uh, um, I, i believe uh, while my classification may not be correct uh, uh, i it, there may be inconsistencies i may still have to iron a few things out uh, which i do plan to do um, uh, the indus corpuses do not have a graphemic inventory so when bahata for instance uh, is doing a statistical analysis she is doing it on a morphemic inventory a morphemic corpus in which certain signs are clustered uh, together as a single sign uh, by the logic of the morpheme uh, whereas if you look at it by the logic of the grapheme uh those can be abstracted and taken out uh, for instance the hat roof sign occurs over five different primary in the signs but in each instance the hat sign is taken by all the corpuses and all the classifications as a morphemic wedded sign but if you actually take it out and take it as a graphemic unit okay and do the analysis based on that chances are the graphemic inventory will show greater consistency and less violative of entropy that indescript has been reported to be uh, by various other analysis because if you put it in lay person's language what is entropy violation when you violate time when you violate the arrow of time when like when you violate direction uh, you are violating entropy and all the indus corpora that i can see now i don't know i have not seen the finished corpora uh, well, finished corpus i have not seen the wells corpus uh, 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 maybe they have sorted these things out and i don't know uh, I have, i've been trying to see the wells corpus for more than a couple of months now it doesn't load i think i should write to the administrators and get an access to it uh, but a, gra- a pure graphemic inventory is not available and it is my belief that if a graphemic inventory is done some more redundancies can be eliminated uh, i bahut i had shown in another paper of her how uh, the proposed signs of 417 by mahadevan can actually be abstracted to 254 uh, um, uh, um, uh, which is a substantial reduction whereas brian wells wells corpus goes from 417 to 676 if i am right if uh, 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 um so so you have varying numbers and varying distributions varying interpretations and varying uh, morphemic uh, um uh, clustering and if you take it out of the morphemic compulsions uh, uh, and look at it purely graphemically then chances are the indescript will produce a better it will will yield to and start informing more and responding more to statistical analysis than it does now currently is 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 my submission that that's why i'm 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 working on the scheme uh, that i am working on yes please go ahead do you mean to ask a question bhota okay so i shall go forward uh participants can unmute themselves uh, now i have disabled the function yeah with that said there is a lot more work to be done in this area okay i just began the classification and i think i'm getting somewhere i need to go but in the meantime as a as a person trying to interpret it i want to express my but my bewilderment in 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 interpreting uh, 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 that and uh, also to try and share how the bewilderment is also shared by our ancient past uh, um okay so we begin all over again with the line um and i call it indus in in one stroke and let's call it one 
it this one line it can it occurs before it occurs after it occurs above it occurs below or in the middle and smaller it occurs all around it occurs in the known direction of writing right to left or against it right and so if i if i were to take this distribution pattern and try to express it uh, 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 um, the only uh, thing that co comes to my mind is tadejati tannejati tadure tadvantike tadantarasya sarvasya tad sarvasyasya bahyatah it moves it moves not it is here near yet it is far it is inside of all it is outside of all this is the predicament or the conundrum that the indescript poses to us okay unless the directionality is is is, is sorted out we will be talking about the indescript in the same language in which isa was was written the lines expressed uh, uh, by its own past and 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 so on and so forth so this is 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 how i i uh, see it uh having said that this is the first time i use a dravidian word and i for this the word for the line the word is code and the formalization of the line is code pad um uh the, therefore the principle of writing is should be called code pad code and pad code pad you take a line and then you do whatever you want with it and then you formalize it in a particular way and that code pad is what writing is what and there is another very interesting observation that i made which is the single line occurs 50 plus times in the initial position that is and if we take its value as 1 it has no business to occur in the initial position unless subsequently there is a 2 marker and a 3 marker and a 4 marker follow that is one is always implicit therefore it should be considered a redundancy okay but one appears in the initial position and i had of 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 a sign 50 plus times in the indescript which tells me as mahadevan himself had proposed but not with the same logic that these numeral signs or these numeral stroke carry a numeral value as a quantifier and a numerary value also as a qualifier okay and this ambiguity or dual meaning until that is sorted out okay the indescript cannot be really understood properly by anyone in an easily accessible manner such as other scripts can be understood today for instance hieroglyphics or 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 cuneiform um and in this people uh, uh, they were not stupid they were they were a very smart people uh, uh, they had no reasons to be putting uh, uh, this one numeral at the beginning of a text uh, uh, you know you know 50 times Uh, 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 they knew exactly what uh, they were doing, and in many and in all these fifty plus occasions, I, I also looked 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 at it to see. Okay, then is it a kind of a list item? Uh, one something, two pearls, three elephants, four boxes. No, it's not. Uh, uh, there are no subsequent numerals. Uh, there are no subsequent enumerators of any kind. Uh, yet this or is this one? Is it purely invocatory? uh if it is invocatory then it must happen everywhere uh and and but it is not happening everywhere it is happening in, or is it an invocatory sign that just fell out of practice we don't know but if it was a numeral to put it in the beginning would be quite stupid and quite redundant and quite implicit such as those these people did not have to do but these people constantly did it for a reason that they understood which we do not which and the reason the only plausible reason that has been suggested for that is by mahadevan in his in his paper again the 1986 paper uh, which i think needs revising based on a graphemic inventory uh, uh, not through morphemic suffixes uh, 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 morphemic suffixes are well understood and everybody understands them today and 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 they come in between they come in the upper register in the middle register but never in the lower register but they also come before uh, 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 they follow the main sign or they precede the main sign uh, they can appear in a trailing position or in a in a in a, uh, in a leading position yeah go ahead 
Uh, no, sir, I just, uh, I said I, I'm ready whenever uh, it's okay. I, I can, uh, I perfect. have. I so can one, perfect. Perfect. One, one question, if I may ask. Yes, yes, please. Here. Yes, please. No, so this is, I think you, I, I don't know, I'm just a novice here, but uh, if you represent, if you're talking about seals, there's also economy of space. Yes, yes. economy of space. So you would not, economy of space is essential. So it, it, it cannot be something very stupid. You wouldn't write four as four. That's right. Lines. So red, red, redundancy so, uh, uh, sh sh should have been condemned by the society, given the small spaces right. that, that they were writing into. Redundancy, redundancy must have been a, uh, a low life thing for them, literally. Literally, they wouldn't have brooked any nonsense. Uh, they were any like, nonsense. So, yeah, yeah. So, so your point that this could, cannot be numeral is quite logical because it, it can't come in a seal like this. Thank you. Uh, um, um, so here I uh, yeah. have. Uh, so um, again, uh, these conjectures are not neither falsifiable and verifiable on my part as well. But um, uh, I think in a seal, so uh, when we, so uh, in a seal or tablet, when say all the seals and tablets were actually talking about mostly the same thing, like same uh, topic actually means uh, other than one or two very big uh, rectangular ones where a, typical uh, thing was there and that was also f found from grave, which is very unlikely otherwise. Normally that is not found in the valley seals are already found in very commercial context. So I think uh, here there was, uh, there is uh, two things, right? So when we are having iconography that uh, sir has shown like Karu and Ka, that is the symbolism he has used, but this kind of stories that iconography say, that is a different thing. That is more like an our emblems, right? Like uh, when we are having Ashoka Stambha in our coin, that part is our iconography. Yes. So iconography can have various uh, meaning that is related to our culture, religion, culture, everything. But then when it came to the writing, we see that the iconography and the writing has no direct connection. The, so the same writing can come with different iconography and the same iconography could uh, actually come with even uh, more than uh, you know, uh, 100 or uh, more than 200 different distinct writing, right, written messages. Yes. So given yes. that, the writing uh, possibly had a very commercial context message because the seal is always trying to uh, authenticate something. So they are using it in trade. They are using it on the package where um, uh, something is packed and or with a reed mat. So in commodities, normal mundane commodities, they are trying to authenticate something like certain rules, whatever the rule should be, some commercially agreed upon rules are getting verified if they are maintained or not. That can be taxation, that can be some other licensing, whatever. But that is that that context is surely there. Now, if that is true, then numerical values should come. Now, I think um, uh, what I thought is many a times, these numerical values, when they are also taken as numerical, they are wrongly sometimes, so I here I'm trying to say this, I don't know, should not use this word wrongly, but uh, if I see Branwell's, Branwell's had a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, um, approach towards the whole thing in many ways, very illuminating, but he has shown that in a particular seal, uh, because it was found with 17 bangles possibly that he could recreate, he said that, this particular sign would be saying 17. But if you see the, a seal's life cycle, when the seal is getting made, then it is getting made for a very generalized rule. So it cannot be changed depending on a particular context. So that means it, if, that, if that rule has to do with taxation or teeth collection or any kind of this kind of things, or even licensing for a particular period of time, so then there will be numerals, but those numerals would be very specific. Like even today, when we talk, we talk about Indian government's tax collection, we will only have certain specific percentages. Yeah. Right, like 
uh, for most of the commodities, it, it will be 12 percent. Then for gold and diamond, it will be very less, a very different percentage are very high. So this kind of difference, differences actually, I think, uh, uh, is also seen in Indus script where specific numerals come with specific uh, lexical signs. And as uh, Vaskar had uh, pointed out, uh, it's very interesting that in certain cases, uh, so the signs have preceded the numeral, like the 336-89 thing, right? So actually I had tried to show that uh, these are fixed collocation. And whatever the reason is, they, they those two signs had a very specific reason of uh, having being together. But if I say normally, always numerical sign will be preceding the uh, what is getting quantified. So in a taxation or tithi collection kind of thing only, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, for a particular commodity, if you are collecting only a particular kind of taxation or if you are having a particular kind of licensing period, th then those kind of values will be only shown and th that will be a very specific uh, amount of, uh, you know, uh, 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 a specific uh, set of uh, numericals will come. So that way, I think numericals uh, may come in our... Uh, in our specific context. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the next thing is whenever numericals are coming, right? So in the in the position where this diamond sign and this kind of sign are coming before this juncture signs, right? Sometimes numerical signs come. So in if at all these numericals were ta tax, tax specific numericals, if at all, then there is a very interesting metonymy that we have. Because in, in ancient time, we were having uh, Sharvagin for king because Sharvaga or one six was a particular uh, fraction that is always a taxation uh, tax, uh, value for the taxation for most of the harvest items. One six of the produce will be, pro will be given. So in that kind of situation, a tax might be even called by that name and it was called like in Maratha time, Choth was a tax because it was one fourth, which was unnecessarily high. So I'm not saying that is that is it because nobody can prove that is it. But when we have this kind of a, uh, so I think I don't know whenever we give we give up any uh, conjecture in this case. I think one thing uh, uh, I would uh, really appreciate is whenever the conjectures are always applicable to the whole. So uh, uh, none of us know that whose conjectures are right or wrong. But uh, when I uh, see that certain in some places, if I'm calling that, okay, these signs are used for a, this purpose, then if, if all the sins are having the similar sequences, then we cannot then drift back to a different uh, purpose. Like, we cannot drift back between materialistic and spiritualistic uh, meanings for different signs. Thus, the particular grapheme can be chosen because of a particular uh, symbolism. That is the grapheme that is chosen. But then the meaning that is getting conveyed in this particular context, I either have to be for the same, like it, it has to be the same meaning, semiotic context. Like that again, we might have completely failed, all of us. But uh, I think that that coherence uh, was something that I think uh, is still wanting uh, in uh, all our interpretations. So, which which is why I actually started with this map, uh, <clears throat> and it shows that Indus Indus literacy uh, was why it was necessary. You see, uh, in Indus sits somewhere here and it travels 3,450 kilometers west, okay? Now the distances to the east and the south are less than 3,450 or thereabouts, okay? And Indus would not have any, any had any problem, any resistance to traveling to those distances and stuff like that or keeping contact. Or, but there to, to, and they were in fact in touch. They were in, in contact beyond what is known as the Indus region. The southernmost Indus region that we know is Daimabad, uh, which is in Maharashtra. 
um, but uh, and that is the region of where we are able to find inter cities but even outside the region of inter cities okay they had contact uh, uh, far beyond those uh, uh, regions but in those regions they did not re- need writing they were able to communicate without writing it did not have to be produced for that purpose the writing had to be produced specifically for commerce with mesopotamia for people for non natives who will not understand our language and therefore it had to be graphically expressed and it had to be expressed as precisely and numerically as possible as something like description quantity um uh, uh, carrier number and so on and so forth and and indus people largely chose to write for that purpose one and second for internal administration purposes for the con- for the confederacy if i may call that word these days it has very ugly connotations uh, 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 but despite that if i can take the liberty to use that word uh, there were several indus cities and uh, several uh, provinces uh, uh, and meet everyone then and to decisions uh, sort of about certain standards make some common conventions uh, make them work to make those announcements to record the, the conclusions of those quote and quote minutes of the meeting uh, these are the two purposes for which they would have needed writing largely for other purposes they could do without writing they were quite successfully doing it without it they were able to communicate among themselves to the natives equally uh, 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 easily regardless of the linguistic diversity of the time which was very vast but the linguistic diversity was within two language families not three as it became later uh, okay the linguistic di- diversity was dravidian munda uh, um, uh, um, at, at that time and prob indo aryan was a little later if, uh, of course all this can be contested uh, um Uh, uh but if you were to look at while the language families were reasonably united within the language family there would have been more species of languages than we see now in the present day and the, this language had to make this expression the script uh, had to make sense to all of them and it had to make sense to foreigners who don't speak our language uh with whom we had uh, indus had contact for 700 years throughout its mature period um um right through uh, the uh, uh, the early dynastic 3 period the akkadian period uh, and the ur period uh, through all these periods they had uh, um uh, trade connections uh, 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 despite many but it is not evident that indus people married with sumerians uh, which which was beginning to become common currency uh, um, uh, in those time for instance uh, um, uh, the kings Uh, of sumeria uh, mesopotamia um uh, and uh, uh, took marriage alliances uh, with syria the mitanni and 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 the, and the later kings of syria uh, later kings of anatolia and within mesopotamia the warring factions which were changing configurations every now and then uh, uh, wars then later became consolidation of wealth to marriages but it is not clear it is absolutely not clear that you know uh, um, that they had any kind of royal marriages that took place let us say between indus and mesopotamia and therefore there was there was that little bit of power in imbalance uh, there was this mercantile class largely mercantile class that was uh, uh, dealing with an increasingly assertive royal class uh, so that power imbalance remained right through uh, um uh, the, the the history of uh, um and indus uh, so all these are are important factors to consider um, is, is, is the point i think we are also running out of time so we'll reserve and you wanted to show some slide after that we'll just open it for questions with whatever time uh, uh, there is um... yeah i i wanted to uh, share one slide but yeah. if i may before that i uh, i had to i wanted to make one uh, small point Yeah. Uh, like um, if if Indus Valley people, uh, on the contrary, like uh, that's again my uh, and that again just my opinion. So uh, so uh, when Mesopotamian people were writing, they are writing for themselves because even in Indus Valley, like 
it's 1 million square kilometer. So this uh, seal scrape, like when they're actually in some, some of the commodities, in, the, uh, in mainly I think in Lothal, um, where the where the the burn, burned warehouse we have, at, uh, Papula had shown. So there one particular commodities package have four to five different seal uh, seals uh, impressions. So uh, this is very similar to a package that is moving trans India. So the where, toll gates. Uh, yeah. So they are actually in different toll gates. We are having different uh, stamps. So uh, in the script, I think has a very interesting. Uh, so we don't know how India civilization died, uh, really collapsed. Uh, so many theories, but we possibly would understand that this seal script. The other scripts could have been there that we couldn't find yet because of perishable material. But the seal script that is there, that collapsed because that was very much needed by this trading and that kind of a trade control. That is very uh, interestingly, very much uh, similar to a Bala tablets that were in Mesopotamia. Because when Mesopotamia uh, uh, civilization had a very, uh, uh, it took a, a very bad blow from the Martu tribe, then they didn't have this central control anymore. So that time the Bala tablet that was written, that was used because of for revenue collection from different pro provinces. Bala is called revenue collection. That uh, that tab those tablets stopped to be there because revenue collection mechanism failed, fall, uh, completely failed at that point. So I think that's a very important uh, thing that why the in the script ceased to be on seals and tablets. So uh, I think possibly uh, when they're in Mesopotamia, very few people were actually going, possibly they were mostly going to Persian Gulf as the archeologists are suggesting now. Many of them are staying there also. Persian peoples, uh, their, um, uh, their seals are extremely uh, influenced by in, in the seal glyptic style. So I think that that till there they had to they were mainly maintaining this relationship within themselves using the seals rather than talking to mesopotamians because they had a very different administrative system possibly their industry people didn't have much of this direct influence so anyway i'll i'll, I'll not no more uh, with any of your time i'll just show that one um slide yeah. one slide. Um, so I think uh, this is a this is a slide I about the Jangchar sign. Uh, so we, this these are the three seals. Uh, can can you see them? Yes. So this seal and this seal they have different content. So this content should be meaningfully complete. This should be also meaningfully complete because they are the only message of two individual seals. But in this seal, this content and this content is actually getting conjugated. And when it is getting conjugated in some way, whatever relationship is that, getting connected fully, this X kind of sign is coming. And that is not a single, uh, single instance. There are many instances where we can directly show that the messages of two different seals, which are meaningfully complete units, are getting actually uh, united in another seal in a very specific way because no, it is just not an agglutinative in, uh, conjugation. Where, uh, because uh, when it will be getting conjugated, the preceding sequence won't have the terminal sign most of the time. Yeah. But the preceding sequence will have the terminal sign. That means there is a very specific type of a phrase structure that is getting here and then it becomes evident. This is a visual juncture or uh, in my way of saying connective morphemes are in between and then the left and the right is visually visibly different. So specific meanings always dominate the pre-connective pre position that is pre previous to the connective sign preceding the connective morpheme and the post-connective positions are uh, quite, uh, having different, very different signatures. So these are always ending with the normal terminal signs and all, but the preceding ones would not have 
any sign. There will be specific set of signs that can mostly occur there. So this visible juncture, as Mahadevan had possibly for the, shown the first time, that is a very important uh, structural aspect uh, in our thing. And uh, then interestingly, that also has a subordinating and coordinating uh, uh, conjunction. So uh, uh, the uh, science will have sometimes uh, together or sometimes so sometimes the preceding and the following will be similarly, morphosyntactically similar. Sometimes they won't be. So in the subordinating relationship. So that, that is one uh, specific thing I wanted to show, like uh, from the visual. And it, handing it over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Aishwarya, any questions that, that, that we need to respond to? No, sir, not in uh, YouTube. On the Zoom chat, someone had asked, I don't know if you'd, uh, what's the celebration between the, between the two celebrations called? Someone named Vikram Ravi, who's also left the Zoom call, so I'm not sure if okay. we can clarify. Okay, so otherwise no questions? There, no, sir, nothing else. which means we can finish on time, uh, 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 more or less. Uh, we have two minutes left, uh, three minutes left. Uh, um, um, so that's, that, that, that's, that's fantastic. And, and, and thank you very much, um, everyone, for the time. Uh, and thanks, especially to Bhavata uh, uh, for, for uh, making it to uh, the session. Uh, as uh, uh, you would have seen, I used a lot of your thinking in, the, in this. Uh, uh, as well as, I don't know if my friend uh, in, in the last few days, two people have motivated me to do the session. Uh, 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 one is you, uh, Bhavata. The other is, is, is my sparring partner, uh, partner who is, is, is the one that I keep fighting with over in this all night. Uh, uh, um, uh, it's, it's, it's worse than fake book ab abuses. Uh, we troll each other with, 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 with all kinds of messages. And uh, um, so he and I have been exchanging uh, a, a lot of ideas. Sharad, I don't know if Sharad is here or on YouTube. Uh, so, uh, so these people contributed a, a great deal, uh, 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 and uh, you may have noticed that I have still not actually addressed the modification of the modifying signs. Uh, I shall continue this and spill this over to the uh, next session. Uh, and Suresh, I just want to ask you: uh, next session we have next week or two Fridays later? It's up to you. It's up to you. If you think you can do it next week, so we then fall back in next line. Week, or next week, no, next week is Diwali week. Yes, yes. So for that reason, I may like to do it a week after because the peop uh, people get to celebrate very little these days. And e even during that celebration, I don't want to talk, uh, get them into a Zoom call, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, we can uh, have it two weeks later from now. Okay, so then we will announce that uh, um, uh, accordingly uh, uh, yeah. in, 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 the, in the days to come. Uh, uh, so we will see in the next session, the summary of the revisions proposed and the summary of all the readings uh, that I could collect up to date that either of them has presented. Uh, that said, I also want to say that, you know, the more and more I, I, I took an 86 paper and I looked at it and uh, there are two ways to look at that 86 paper. Uh, one is that it's, that's, that, that's outdated and it needs to be revised. And another that, that way to look at it is that uh, after 86, Mahadevan had uh, 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 30 plus uh, years of Indus research career in which he wrote. He just did not find the time to go back and revise this paper. And he told me many aspects of uh, uh, that paper and some of uh, the improvements that, that can actually be made over there. So I have collected all those that he has suggested. So some of the improvements that I suggested are recomm as recommended by him. And the graphemic inventory that I propose is completely uh, my take, uh, and I point it out here very specifically because uh, when a scholar passes, uh, the danger is not that somebody else plagiarizes his book. That's a very stupid kind of a danger. The greater danger is that somebody apocryphally attributes uh, uh, all kinds of work to him. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 you know, and that is a greater danger. So I want to be very conscious in 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 saying that when I say something, it's it's me because that ignorance is mine. It's not his. Uh, and when it is his, I want to be very, very clear that it is Airavata Mahadevans and as he proposed it. 
um i have written evidence in the form of notebooks that he has left with me uh, uh, on many occasions but there are also occasions when he did not put it put it down in writing he just simply said it to me for instance uh, the last paper that we wrote was the toponyms of east west paper and i uh, when he told me the signs for east and west my first reaction was okay then what happens in north and south so he said mr basker we have to submit this paper this afternoon can we proceed that's all he said he never he never discussed north and west south after that with me now i go back open his notebook he has noted down north and south over there okay he wanted to be sure he wanted to check the citations he wanted to be absolutely clear you know before he would just push it down into the public domain uh, so there are private notes like that and private remarks like these which 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 i am accessing and updating uh, as i go which is really uh, um, the 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 uh, reason for this uh, uh, talk series even yeah okay thank you please so enjoy the, uh, the graphical thing is actually very interesting so um, i i really uh, so that that will be a very good addition to this i shall uh, exchange uh, notes with you i shall definitely exchange no no not even only me so please publish it that that's yeah, a, <laughs> that, that's a very interesting approach because yeah. um, this four uh, yeah so that is something people should see more like that and bahata if you can if you have it and ready you, do your sumerian and your uh, on the on the on the the pal the ivory thing yes yes do you have a, a, a combination to show it just a, after having read the paper it might be it will help to see it together uh no you are you are talking about the indus script part and like yeah, you are saying the sumerian uh, script also had something similar in uh no i i have not yet uh, uh, ca- ca- come down to the script part the, it was very uh, uh, i wanted to segregate because uh, in uh, this uh, so from the script is very difficult to go to the language uh, mm. uh, we can be uh, having very interesting speculation but because in the ivory thing or the language itself was um, uh, archaeologically very uh, like it is kind of fossilized in the mesopotamian writings that we they are calling it piru and uh, the uh, even hurrian writing everybody is calling it piru so when uh, so many elamite uh, language that is not directly related to mesopotamian like typologically might be but that is a very different language so when so many languages are calling uh, having a similar word which is very much our word for uh, the same thing so from there uh, we have such a seri- uh, such a serious coincidence like that cannot be you know speculative call speculative so I, if i have uh, any script ba- based speculation there then that uh, dilutes that context so i have kept that separately so the script based i have some uh, inklings or i have some my own uh, gut feeling So that will be the next one. That will be kept separately. Uh, the land, the look, for, look forward to that. Thank you, sir. Right, okay. And uh, your, uh, you, some of your additions were very illuminating. I'll not take any more time. But uh, so even I have told bit, but very nice. The way of uh, presented it was also very illuminating. Um, See, I, I, I immediately saw a jeweler's shade card. It's so simple. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, right okay so i string the beads in a particular configuration i want to describe it and i put my yes. description and i print it there label it uh, mm-hmm. I, I, you know put a nice little copper tag uh, um, uh, 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 which which i would hesitate to throw away uh, um, uh, uh, you know that's how i would package it as a merchant and and it's a and, very uh, nice packaging actually because i have not i have not talked about um, the gold gold plated part so that is a interesting possibility uh, yes. that uh, uh, and uh, so i have told that the banded agates are etched the cornelians are etched that yeah. so this etching kind of thing that might have that kind of a significance but yes. uh, this um, this gold capping and uh, this ivory uh, for inlaying was a very interesting uh, inclusion to that if i <laughs> if i with your permission when i publish that one uh, i i'm going to uh, so i i with your permission i'll include that and have you most, uh, most, welcome, 
most welcome most i gratefully acknowledge you for that um, you know yeah. most welcome thank you so much most welcome okay good night then everybody okay hi <laughs> okay okay uh, uh, good night everyone and uh, look forward to seeing you all in two weeks thank you okay.